Welcome to episode 14 of Juan's World and today I'm going to be cooking cockalee soup. It's a great favorite in Scotland and it was a great favorite of my father. My father used to make it every Christmas Eve and I watched him make it and now I make it myself. And it is so very simple in its basic form. Chicken, leeks, water, plus some parsley and pepper. Very simple. But we're going to be the chameleon chef, we're going to be the anti-chef, chameleon cook, whatever. <laughs> I'm losing track of all my different names. But I'm going to do this in two parts. Today is just going to be talking about how to cook the basic cockaliki soup and it's really very simple but I'll run through the steps and then at the end I will also talk a little bit about alternatives if you switch out the chicken switch it out for any poultry you can switch it out for turkey for duck uh, for pheasant maybe <laughs> I don't know I think that would be a bit of a waste or quail or dove or who knows what but anyway we're just going to do the basics today so this is part one and then next week we'll do part two and I'll show you not only how to use different poultry but also how to take the stock and use it in so many different ways it's the most versatile stock I know of you can make a ton of different soups out of it gravies all kinds of things so Let's get started with basic cockaliki. So here is the starting point. You need a chicken and uh, the size will depend on what you can get. This is actually a fairly big one but um, you can use a smaller chicken. It depends on how much cooked chicken you want and how much you want in the kokaliki. I mean a really filling like, meal of the soup would use the whole chicken in the soup but you don't have to do that and I'm not going to do that today but this is a whole chicken in a stock pot and I've added a chopped up onion as well I sometimes do that the strictly traditional cockaliki is of course chicken and leek but I like to add an onion as well chopped up so that's our starting point all right, so I filled up the pot with water so that now we've got chicken and onions and water. And I'm going to add a few extra ingredients at this point, but cockaliki has to be about the simplest recipe in the world. You really have a hard job messing it up. It's chicken, onions, leeks, the end. But we're going to do some chameleon cooking or anti-chef cooking in a little while but let's just get to this part first the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to add the green tops of some leeks if i were doing this in europe or the united states i'd probably just use two leeks but i'm in cambodia where the leeks are kind of frail and skinny and so i'm going to use four tops i use the green tops first for flavor and also because the green tops tend to be a little tougher than the white parts and so they need some extra cooking. So let me add that part now.
right? There's the leaks. Also some black pepper. I'm very fond of black pepper in cockaliki. I'm going to give it a little bit of a stir. I don't have any parsley, but I'm going to look around to see if I can do something similar because parsley is an important addition, but it's very hard to get in Cambodia. But I'll see what I can find that will help me substitute and meanwhile this is going to come to a boil now I'm going to let it boil or simmer I should say I'm going to let it simmer for quite some time traditionally cock a leaky soup was made with a cock or with a, a very old boiler hen and so you would start it very slowly and cook it very very slowly for a very long time but to tell you the honest truth, I have tried doing that year after year after year and I can never really get tender chicken. So these days I tend to just use a regular baking or frying chicken and I get nice tender meat. It's going to need to come to a slow simmer and then I'm going to let it simmer for about one hour. So I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, it's come to a gentle simmer, and I'm just going to take out a little bit of the scum that comes to the top. Not much on this one, but just periodically just take a little look, and where it gathers, just take it out looks not too bad. I'm going to cover partially and continue the simmering. I'll check back in about 20 minutes and I'll let you know. All right, the pot's been bubbling away for about 30 minutes, so I'm going to now add the rest of the leeks. You can see that the green part of the leeks have cooked down fairly well, and I expect the um, flavor has been added to the broth. In fact, let me just check that. Mm, 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 mm. Yes, there's a really a good leek flavor in there, but I'm going to add the rest of the leeks now. I don't want them to cook too long. If I cook them for a whole hour, they're going to get really mushy. But if I just cook them for the last 25 minutes or so, then they'll still retain a little bit of firmness and they're going to add even more flavor to the broth. Now you'll see that I've cut them on the diagonal because that makes them more exposed to the poaching liquid and so they cook a little bit better that way. And now back on with the lid, another 20 minutes or so, and then I'm going to put the whole pot in the fridge after it has cooled down because this is one of my many two-day dishes. You make it on the first day, 
up to a point and then you refrigerate so the flavors can all marry and then on the second day you finish off so back on with the lid I'm just gonna half cover because I want to keep it simmering gently I don't want it to boil I'll see you in about 25 minutes okay the air was up let me just take off the lid oh it's looking wonderful I'm just gonna have a taste Ah, very good. Now, if you can't wait, then uh, you can do the final preparation now, but I'm going to turn off the stove, let the pot cool, and then refrigerate overnight. Now, with chicken, you have to be really careful, and especially here in the tropics. I've had chicken on the stove like this, let it cool, so you turn off, let it cool, and then by the time I went to bed, it had already started to rot. So you have to let it get as cool as necessary so that you can put it in the refrigerator. If you're in a temperate climate, you can be a little bit looser, but here, what, as soon as this is cool, it, bang, it's going in the refrigerator, and then we'll come back tomorrow and finish off the kokaliki, and I'll also talk about turkaliki and dakaliki and maybe even quailaliki I don't know <laughs> we'll see tomorrow it's now the following morning and I have just removed the chicken from the refrigerator and uh, you can maybe see from this photograph that the soup is actually quite gelatinous at this point because of the gelatin from the bones uh, and it's uh, quite rich and thick and the first thing to do is to let it warm up to room temperature on the stove I could just turn the stove on of course but to some extent that's a bit of a waste of my propane and also not necessary I can let it warm up to room temperature and then we'll go from there all right so i've left the pot on the stove to warm to about room temperature it's still a little bit cool but close enough and so now i'm going to turn the stove on and you'll notice that, I, that the camera is uh, moving a little bit because i'm hand holding it at this point i'll put my tripod up again in a little while but right now what i want to do is turn the oven on there we go make sure yeah so it's heating i'm going to turn it down to low i just want to heat it really gently i'm not going to bring it back to a simmer or anything like that i just want to heat everything through a little bit take out the chicken and then i'll take the meat off the bones and continue the preparation of the soup so for the next uh 10-15 minutes i'm just going to leave it on and I'll come back and probably use my tripod. I'm also going to take a few still photos because some of the processes you don't really need to see in detail and it's better if I can just take a photo then get my hands all wet and, and uh, greasy from the chicken and pull the meat off and so forth. You don't really need to see the video for that. But I'll get my camera on the tripod in a little while and we'll go from there. So now we come to the final stage. I let the chicken in the pot warm through, didn't bring it to a simmer even, just let it warm through. And now I have taken the chicken out of the pot and placed it in a pan ready to take the meat off the bone and you'll see that what remains is a beautiful delicious liquid of chicken broth and leeks and that's the basis for the soup 
So the next step is to take the chicken off the bone and put some of it back into the broth. If you want a really, really hearty soup, then you can add the entire chicken to the soup. It will serve four very generously. But in this case, I live alone. I want just one portion for today's lunch. So I'm just going to strip the chicken. I'm going to heat up the soup with chicken in it and then have my lunch. So let's do the stripping of the chicken part. I'm sorry the video is going to be a little bit obscured. You're going to see an awful lot of my hairy arms <laughs> more than the chicken. But it's just to give you the general idea. All right, so I've now got the setup so that I can take the chicken meat off the bone and store it and then I'm going to keep the bones because I'm going to boil them again. Uh, and I don't know quite how this is going to work aesthetically because I have set up the tripod so that I can do this with my hands, both hands, because we need both hands. Um, but it's not necessarily going to be as informative as I might have hoped. So let's get to it. The chicken has cooled down a little bit, enough so that I can touch it, so I can hold it, and I'm not going to burn my hands, but it's still warm, and it needs to be a little bit warm so that it'll come easily off the bone. Now what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take the skin off. In dietary circles these days, some people say skin is the best part, some people say skin is terrible, it'll kill you. Well, for soup I don't like the skin. I'm okay with skin now and again, but for this soup I don't want it. So now I've exposed the breast and I'm going to take the two breasts off simply by using my hands because it's, it's soft enough that I can. So I'm going to take put my fingers down the breastbone and pull off the breast. Okay? And then what I'm going to do, still going to use my fingers, I'm just going to break it into pieces into the bowl. Now for me there's an aesthetic about this. I don't want to cut the meat. I want to I want to get my hands involved and I want it to be uneven if you like. Okay, so now you can see that the breast is completely exposed. And you can see the pieces, I'm just going to break them with my fingers and put them in the bowl. But I'm also going to show you just briefly, a look at the carcass, the drumstick and thigh just come straight off because it's well cooked. I'm going to take both drumsticks and thighs off and then I'm going to take the meat off the bones into my bowl. Not necessarily going to take all of the meat off because I'm going to put the bones back to to work again. In fact, it was going so quickly that I might as well just complete it for you. Okay, one more drumstick, skin coming off, one more thigh. Sorry, it's a little bit obscured. I'll try my best to show you what's going on. I'm just pulling the meat off. And there are odd bits and pieces of bone, like you can see here, this bone used to be used to make needles in Paleolithic times. It's now just a nuisance if you're, if you're making it 
into a soup and the bone gets in the soup. Okay, last, last chance, the, the second part of the breast. People used to ask, how many breasts do chickens have? Well, they don't have two. They're not, <laughs> they're not mammals, they have one breast. So a chicken breast is the whole breast, the two halves. And this little piece right by the keel bone, so this is the, the keel bone, and this part right by it is a very, very tender piece of meat. I'm just going to pull off the wishbone now and just take the little bits of extra meat from the wishbone. I'm in the habit of, see there we are, in the habit of saving wishbones for no particular reason because I don't have anyone to pull them with. You know anything about wishbones, you know that they are used for making wishes. Okay, that's about all I'm going to do. I'm going to leave the rest of it and then I'll show you how to put the soup together once I've cleaned my hands. This is the bowl of chicken meat that I took off the bone and here are the bones and I'm going to put them back into the stock pot later and make another broth from them. And now here we have the old broth from the original stock pot which I put into a smaller pot so that I can clean out the bigger pot to make the new broth and the chicken meat. And could not be simpler. Heat the broth and the leeks through add as much chicken as you want and then you are ready to serve. So when the soup is completely heated through, ladle into bowls, piping hot and serve with crusty bread if you can. Makes a nice uh, way to mop up everything in the bowl so that you don't leave anything. And then I had some extra chicken, much, much more than I needed, so into the refrigerator it goes and I'm going to use it for other things, maybe a curry or maybe some stir fry, I don't know, but it's all ready to go. And I'm going to put the bones on to boil again. I've cleaned out the stock pot, I'm putting them back on and that will be part of my next video, but for now the chameleon cook, the anti-chef, wants to remind you that you can trade out the, the chicken in this part, uh, but you can't really change out the leeks. It's chicken and leek. That's, those are the two basic ingredients. You remember in cottage pie and in shepherd's pie, the ingredients such as the fillings were quite complex. Here, everything is so simple. So if you trade out both the chicken and the leeks, <laughs> it's like the old story about the man who had changed the axe head four times and the axe handle three times, but it was still the same old axe. I'm telling you, if you change out both the chicken and the leeks, you don't have anything remotely resembling cockaliki. But you can change out the chicken. And I have made turkaliki, that is, a, you know, a, usually at Thanksgiving, taken the remnants of the turkey from the Thanksgiving dinner and I've made turkey soup with leeks. I've also done the same with a Christmas duck, with a Christmas goose. Um, I've not tried any other poultry as far as I can remember, but that's a pretty good set of choices. Duck and goose are not necessarily the best poultry to make soup with. But turkey is fine, so have a go, and I will see you next time.